now let me show you uh, how to migrate this traditional java application which is running on my local machine to openshift okay so let's copy this repo link right i've logged into openshift container platform and i have two namespaces here one is dev and one is qa and um, let's go and deploy it inside this dev namespace this is where typ typically developers will work so once I log into OpenShift, uh, OpenShift has a method called source to image. It is one of the methods of de deploying applications into OpenShift. So click on add to project. And I want this application to be deployed into a Tomcat, a Tomcat instance. So I'm going to choose Tomcat 8 template here. This can be a typical Tomcat template also. And I name it welcome. And the git url is this one right and also in the advanced configuration you can choose whether if it is picked from a different branch on uh, which context directory we want to pull all these pieces you can choose i'm going to leave all the defaults right you can also see how much cpu this can consume and how much memory this application can consume all these pieces you can mention i'm going to change only one piece the routing part so where I want to put Jersey MySQL, this is this is what the application name um, with which it is get deployed onto Tomcat. So I'm going to put that. Even if I don't put that, it works, but for easiness, okay. And then hit create. Now click on continue overview. And you can see a build is running now. If I go click on the view log. It shows you how the build process is happening. So what it does is uh, it's going to clone the repo, which is this one, right? And then read the palm.xml file and look for all the dependencies and then install all of them. So it does a Maven build and then generates a var file and it deploys inside Tomcat. All these will happen as part of the Docker build process, but it as a developer, I don't need to know all of these pieces. If I'm just getting started with Docker, I don't need to know all, of, all these pieces. OpenShift will take care of it. So we can, if you click on follow, you can see all the dependencies are installed. And it's now, it has generated a var file and it's now put into opt web server. And it created a Docker image. That's the binary. So. What's a Docker image? It has all your dependencies, your base OS, your middleware, everything packaged into one single image. And that image is being now pushed to an internal Docker registry. A Docker registry is like your artifactory where you push your artifacts. In the, in the similar way, your images are being pushed into an internal OpenShift Docker registry. Once that is done, it's going to deploy the application. So let's wait for this to complete. So it's no 100% complete. Now it's going to deploy that application. You can see it's currently running now. Let's go and take a look in the logs. So you can see the Tomcat is being started up. Okay, it's already started. Now if I go click on this route, it's going to show hello world. So pretty simple to deploy your application onto OpenShift. I have not changed any single line of code for this migration. It's, it works out of the box, right? So one simple thing that we want to make sure is um, in this configuration, we want to connect to a MySQL instance, but we don't have a MySQL instance configured yet. Um, so let's go and run a MySQL instance inside OpenShift and let's connect this MySQL instance and the welcome application that we deployed. Okay, so this application needs to connect to a MySQL instance in order for us to test the DB test endpoint. So REST API, it, it works. So this is where it is running. In order to test this DB test endpoint, I need to connect it to a MySQL instance. So let's do that. Deploying a MySQL instance or any other database, uh, most most common databases is supported by OpenShift out of the box. You can see it supports a wide variety of databases. 
let's let's pick mysql for now right so i'm gonna this is a mysql template i'm going to give a default values here app user and let's call dev underscore password right and then a sample database is again sample database uh, with these credentials i'm going to create a mysql database inside OpenShift. so it's going to create a mysql instance here give it a couple of seconds and it should show up okay as you can see the mysql instance is up and running now if i go into terminal mysql minus u root you can see i'm connected to mysql instance here okay once i have that i'm gonna create some dummy data in the development environment so that we can see pulling this uh, data in, inside the application right so i have few queries here which is sample db is already there i'm going to create this customer table and then populate some data okay now select star from customer i have some data which is dev johnson jeff smith and all okay once i have this so remember uh, the application is now pointing to a location called slash opt config and then application dot properties file just like we have seen it inside this code so if we take a look in this code application is pointing to this location okay only thing that changes from dev to qa to any other environment is this file right only this file changes for your application and openshift has a very clean way of changing this file um, across different environments so you can change the environment variables or you can change your application properties file so both are supported by openshift in in most cases very complex use cases you want you may want to use application properties file but simple configuration you can change it using environment variables so your immutable image only thing that changes across environments is either your application properties file or your environment variable so i don't have this file yet so what i'm going to do is create a simple um, configuration on openshift using config maps so config maps are a way to expose properties files onto your deployments so creation of config maps maps is pretty simple all you do is oc create config map and then i'm going to create this config map from a file that's situated uh, in this src main this is an example properties file i have i'm going to use this properties file i need to give a name sorry about that db config so this configuration map is called db config and it is generated from this file okay so oc get config maps so it's it has a db, a db config map now so this config map will be created in dev qa and all other environments also okay and let me create inside a qa also so i'm i've created it inside qa if i don't give any minus n option it's going to create in the current direct current uh, namespace that is dev okay so once i have the configuration map file i'm going to these these configuration maps are stored inside etcd okay and these configuration map files can be mounted onto a, a existing application or a container uh, using volume mounts okay so it's pretty simple for in the, in the beginning it may seem something like complex but it's pretty simple once you understand it so i'm going to clear this off sorry so 
So I'm going to, I need to edit these default values, right? Because these are not applicable for my de development deployment. So in the QA environment, I have a MySQL username. So I have chosen it as app user. This is what we have chosen here. So if I go take a look in the MySQL deployment. The MySQL user is app user, my silk password is dev password and database is sample DB. Right. And what's the host name? So inside OpenShift, all the other projects that are deployed are detected based on the service names. So in this case, MySQL is actually a service name for this uh, MySQL container. So this is internal service discovery provided by OpenShift itself. Okay. So I'm going to just place MySQL here. So it's going to automatically resolve it to this container. And the database name is again sample database, which is okay. Okay. So we have created a config map and it's now stored inside the cluster storage, but it's not attached to my application. So creation of configuration file is one step and attaching it to existing application is another step. So I'm going to attach it. I have a little helper um, in the wiki here. So I'm going to use that. So I need to update the deployment configuration with these two simple parameters. Okay. So let me show you how, where it is in the applications deployment section go to application and then click on actions and edit YML. This is where you can change the parameters. It seems a lot, but these are all auto generated. So you don't need to worry about it. Um, let me go back to the wiki page here. So two things you need to update. One is volume section. So volume section is, is a pretty interesting concept. Volumes can come from different uh, things. Uh, it can come from NFS, it can come from some cloud storage, it can also come from the config map that we created. Okay, so just use that con volume and put it just on the top of the container section here. So this volume can be used by any number of containers that is running inside this pod. Okay, so once I have that, I'm gonna use this and I need little changes there but so I have once have this DB uh, config volume I'm going to use it and mount it onto a location specific to container so I mean I need to paste it here what does it mean this this volume that I have needs to be kept inside OPT config this is where I want to put it right I already know the file name from the config map so I'm just putting it here and then click save that's it it's going to redeploy my application because I've changed the configuration it's just going to redeploy uh, my application let me take a look in the logs let it complete the boot up. Pretty simple to change your only thing that changed, like I said, is your application properties file. So we just updated the application properties file. So it looks like the boot up is complete. Let me make sure it, it is mounted properly. OPT config and application properties file. So it's mounted now. So I have created an object inside cluster and that object is mounted as a file here, right? So dev password looks good. 